Glory to God. Some of your faces are going to be in the newspaper. Huh? Some of your faces are going to be on TV. Huh? Showing the before and the after picture. Huh? Glory to God because God. Cry in the car. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's Sunday night. Put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Hello, everybody. I am so glad you're here with me. I am so glad you're here with me. I am so glad you are here with me. Oh, boy. Yeah, buddy, buddy, buddy. I guess uh, how many of y'all were holding your breath waiting on this big lawsuit that was supposed to happen? I hope you ain't pass out holding your breath waiting because uh, <laughs> oh, when I get back from the islands, we it's going to be a lawsuit filed and, 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 and so many people are coming forward. I hope y'all ain't hold your breath and fall out. <laughs> Because if you did, you'd be on, you'd be blue in the face, you'd be dead and stinking right about now. If you did, my God, Lord have mercy. Hey, I'm sitting here. I decided to just sit in my easy chair um, and rest tonight. Um, me and Amy go sit here and just watch the snowfall. It's snowing, and uh, we just, I decided to just sit in here and just keep warm and enjoy this nice environment. And uh, yeah, but. <laughs> If you haven't done so already, please like the video and, and share this video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channels, please do so. I really would appreciate that. But uh, I'm not going to hold you very long. I forgot to set that clock. And I don't know when I keep looking over there um, saying 704, but it's actually 804. Um, I'm going to be out of here by 9, 9-ish, 9 9-15-ish. 9 but 
there has let's let's go back. Went to the Dominican Republic. Which Marco? Come back. Go to all boys trip to Dubai. Come back. Oh, oh, when I come back from it's gonna be lawsuits filed any day now. Okay, then you go to Mexico, take the picture in your drawers in Mexico. Traumatizer. So if you if you if you got a weak stomach or you're eating dinner now, look away, close your eyes. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I ain't gonna put that up. I ain't gonna put that up. I ain't gonna put that up. I ain't gonna do y'all like that. I ain't gonna do y'all like that. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. But uh, yeah, I'm joking. I'm not gonna put that up there tonight. But uh, uh, <laughs> so just uh, <laughs> so but oh, three trips out of country. But oh, the losses is coming. Went that one out of the country three times. Oh, NASA's gonna file the lawsuit. Da -da 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 oh, and more people gonna come forward. That was what women when did that first happen? This lawsuit was supposed to come now. That was before Christmas, right? Wasn't it before Christmas? Y'all refresh my memory. So many lies been told. I think it was before Christmas. I think. But anyway, here it is. This is March. This is 90 days later. Ain't no lawsuits been filed. Ain't a one been filed. Ain't an Amy. No. Ain't no lawsuit been filed. Nope. Ain't no lawsuit been filed. Uh-uh. You done got three months older. Yeah. Ain't no lawsuit been filed. That man over there lying. But what has come out his lover of 13 years has dropped dropped a hammer on him. That has come out. <laughs> ain't no lawsuit been filed. Manasseh Jordan ain't filed that. Manasseh Jordan ain't even made no videos. But we, we still ask him. Oh, Prissy, Prissy. Ain't no settle out of court. What does, what's there to settle out of court? What's there to settle out of court? Where was the evidence? Think about it. Think about it, Prissy. They they put out a lie. Oh, we sell out of court. If there was an out of court settlement, first of all, there has to be an in court document. There has to be something filed. Um, that would have, that would have hit the airwaves. If there had been an out of court, uh, there'd be any kind of legal settlement. It would have leaked by now. Oh. Uh, it would have been all over the internet. It would have been everywhere. Um, why would Bishop Jakes pay him any money? If, if anything, it'd be the other way around, slander, defamation of character. He'd be paying Bishop Jakes. Uh, you know, they tried to shake him down. Larry tried to shake him down. Well, the word was $5 million. And then it got uh, down to 500000 So, uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what, what the, uh, nah, I don't believe that. I wouldn't believe that. I hope you don't believe that either. So, no, I wouldn't believe that. I wouldn't believe nothing that comes out of his mouth. If he, if he told me the sky was blue and I'm looking up in the sky, I still would doubt it if it came out of his mouth. Um, nah. Mm -mm. That's, uh, that's another thing. If a man will lie to you about being gay and then his, his love of 13 years comes out. Excuse me for a second. Excuse me for a second.
Sorry about that. So he has a lover of 13 years. Come forward. He lied about that. So our, our cash settlement. It ain't hard to lie. Look at his track record. It's not hard to lie. You got a whole lover that you forgot to tell the world about that you was with 13 years. Why are you still married to your wife? Uh, one of many lovers, which is funny to me. There's one. Uh, then all these accusations that came out. And we know your track record. So, mm. but I just find it—I just find it so so interesting. All this big tra trash talk. Oh, we doing this? We doing that? Um, he was the one doing all the talking. Manasseh Jordan never spoke any. You ever? You never heard Manasseh Jordan talking? He never accused Bishop Jakes of anything. It was never him. It was always Larry Reed. Um, Bernard Jordan never accused Bishop Jakes of anything. Only thing he ever said publicly, he said, I'm going to support my son. The two Jordans never said Bishop Jakes did anything. It was all Larry Reed doing this talk. It was all him. Remember that. He was the one doing all the talk. He was the one that, oh, there's going to be lawsuits filed. He was the one that mysteriously pulled a text message from 2016 and put it out there saying that this is from him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That it was from um, Bishop Jakes to Manasseh. Then when you look at it, it was somebody sending it to Bishop Jakes, not from Bishop Jakes, but we, we weren't supposed to notice that. But here's another thing uh, that it dawned on me. It's 2024. This whole thing broke in 2023. That's seven years span, right? So I want you to think about something. Uh, all of you in the chat, I want you. To, I want you to do something. All of us have cell phones, right? How many times in the last seven years have you changed cell phones? Put it in the chat real quick. Just put it in the chat. I'm just. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see something real quick. How many times have you switched cell phones in the last seven years? I guarantee everybody in here to switch cell phones at least twice. Because you had to upgrade your phone. Wow, you've only switched phones once and you've never switched phones? Oh my gosh. Your software is way behind oh my goodness yeah see dr anthony four times every two years on average you're gonna switch out your phone right so so on average two to four times you switch your phones out in the last seven years each time you switch your phones out now there i from what i'm talking to people now they've done something lately See, when you used to switch your phones out, the only thing that transferred from the old phone to the new phone is your uh, was your 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 phone numbers that you had stored in your phone. Your text messages didn't transfer. Your phone numbers did, and your apps did. Right. So, you well, for people that have a Droid phone, they take the SIM card and all that. But see, I have an iPhone. So you, you do the thing with the iPhone. It transfers your numbers, uh, your contacts, and things like that. But text messages, they normally stay on the old phone. So that means in seven years, let's just say, you know, a person that's in, in his line of work in ministry, you know, they probably change their phones every year. They upgrade to the latest phone every year so let's just say you got an old phone from 2016 laying around and you got them text messages in there um 
in the in the course of a day, the average person sends and receives ten text messages, ten times three hundred sixty five. You know, right off the head. You know, you sending uh, in a month's time, you sending about anywhere from three to five thousand text messages in a month's time. I'm just stick a pen in it. Stick a pen in it. I'm, I'm getting. I'm going somewhere. I'm just, just for the sake of argument. Uh, I'm not even talking about clouds. Let's just say for the sake of argument, you switching all these phones out. Right? You switching all these phones out, and you send in uh, the average person, just private citizen, three to five thousand text messages a month. Now, a person that's in ministry. Them people know them to have more than one phone. They don't just have one phone. They have one phone that's personal. They have one phone that's for business. So the amount of text they're sending out in the course of a day might be, uh, of a month, might be anywhere from seven to 10,000 texts total. Plus, if you're a person that's running an international ministry, you might not even be sending texts out yourself. You might have a staff member that's responding to your text text messages for you. You might have people working on underneath you that send texts out for you. So my point is, how did Larry Reed know in 2023 to go all the way back to whenever date and time that's uh, I'm in my head in 2016 when this personal message was supposed to have been from Bishop Jakes to Manasseh. How did he know to scroll all the way to that point in time seven years back to find that one little piece of information? If they had been communicating that long, a reasonable mind would deduce that there would be more text messages. And you got to funnel through those. He already admitted it that when um, Manasseh wasn't looking, he he screenshotted those text messages. He did whatever he was going to do with those text messages. But, you know, even if they were on the cloud, you still got to know where to go back, scroll back. That's seven years. Excuse me. That's seven years worth of text messages. That's seven years worth of text messages because they've communicated for multiple years. So you got to scroll back and you go all the way. Here it is when this thing, this story, this story broke in 2023. And then you go back seven years and find that little piece of uh, information. And that's what you come out to the whole world with. Oh, see, this is proof that he was grooming him. And then, and then we find out you lied because the text message that you put up, it didn't say from him to Manasseh. It was from whoever to Bishop Jakes. And then the picture is Bishop Jakes just sitting there in a red shirt at a desk. Wasn't him and and no, like you said, there's pictures of him out there in speedo, uh, with a peach cobble in his hand. You know, we know AI and Photoshop can do wonders with, with pictures. So yeah, okay. So it was a shakedown, and you he didn't get he didn't allow himself to be shaken down. He stood up to you. You lost, but you just rolled this lie all the way out. And then Manasseh Jordan and his daddy backed away from you because they saw what, what was coming. And then mysteriously, right around the time you told this lie, your skeletons came out the closet. The skeletons that I had already opened the door to many, many moons ago. But this time, it was from somebody in your inner circle. Two people, Lester, And Vincent, Vincent been with you for 13 years. Lester was with you for a year. They put it all on the line, told her all the stuff that was going on behind the scenes that nobody knew about. They were in your inner circle. They, they, were, they were in your house. They was in your beds, and you was in their beds, and, and, and things you like to do with your hands and all that. They they talked about everything. They talked about the stuff that we we could have went our whole life and not knew about and been okay. But you can't put a spin on this that 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 uh 
what, what's the word? Uh, what they call them? Say half face or whatever they call them. What's the nickname? Half face, half wig, or whatever. He can't spin this one for you. You have given him nothing to work with on this one. There's audio of you saying that because your 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 you know what is in the person. And that you got holy, uh, holy, uh, your your seed is is anointed or whatever. I'm, I'm paraphrasing so that uh, uh, YouTube don't don't flag my video, my uh, money monetizations. So I'm using my words. I'm using my colorful words. You said your seed is in somebody, so that you know, and all that good stuff. So they are part of you. Are part of them, and all of that good stuff. We got you on audio saying that. You, not somebody that said you said it. We got you saying it. You saying it, sir. Got you saying it. You said that. You can't spin that. Got you saying that you with the arranged marriage. Got you on audio talking about admitting to uh, falsifying a, a PP loan, PPP loan document. We got your voice saying those things. Not somebody saying you said it. We got your voice saying it. Admitting you slept with the man, a man. Got that, got you admitting you slept with the man. After you admitted all these years that you weren't homosexual. Then we got you and me and you slept with the man. So you're trying to minim minimize your, your uh, relationship with the man, but he was with you for 13 years. You was in a 13-year relationship with him. You can't spend that. You can't. The man admitted what his part in it, and he apologized to your ex-wife. You can't. Puss in Boots can't save you this time. Your, you don't even have a closet to come out of. There's no door on your closet. It's just a walk-in closet. You don't even have a door no more. You can't come out the closet because there is no door. All you can do is walk out into the room. There's no door for you to walk, come out of anymore from behind. There's no door. That man removed your door. He told everything about you. Lester told everything about you. Puss in Boots cannot put a spin on it. And you're supposed to be having this, that which leads me to my next thing. You you said when you got back from all your vacations and your globe trotting that you was going to have this big interview out in California. And you was going to tell what, you know, basically, come, I guess you're going to finally admit that you, what we already knew, that you gay. But here's the thing. We don't need a press conference for that. We don't need an interview for that. Ray Charles from the cemetery can 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 uh, pretty much uh, see that you gay. What we need you to come clean about is the three survivors. We need you to admit that. We need to admit you to admit that the part the part where Vincent said that. You are living, your lifestyle is bankrolled off the of donations of the people that are contributing to you. We need you to admit to that. And we need to, you to admit to your health situation. Because if that allegation is true, you've committed a crime because you're out here having unprotected sex, knowing that you are sick. And that's a felony. And you can go to prison for that. Because you're knowingly spreading a disease that you know you have and you're not telling your partners. We don't care about you being gay. We, we, we already, 99.9% .9 of the people that look at you, first glance at you, know that you something ain't heterosexual about you. So that's not a shock. 
what we're waiting on you to talk about is Levantre and the other two accusers. The other people that came out and said what they said you did to them. We need you to admit to that. The misappropriation and embezzlement of funds. Your health status. Those things. That's what we need you to admit to. Other than that, that, that press conference is a total waste of time. Total waste of time. Because we already know you're gay. So what? So what? No, Nobody was, oh my God, he said he was gay. No kidding. What about those three people? That that uh, say you victimized them. What about them? What about the embezzlement and misappropriation of funds? Living the high life off those donations and the PPP loans and other things. What about your health stat? What about that arranged marriage that you set up so that your lover could stay in the country? That's a felony as well. That's five years in prison, $250,000 fine. That's a fight. Think I'm lying? <laughs> I'm not telling you something I just heard in the street now. I'm not just telling you something I heard now. Not telling you something I heard. How long do you go to jail for fake marriage? Five years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine for any individual who knowingly enters into a marriage for the purpose of evading any provision of the immigration law. That means your cousin goes to jail for five years and she pays $250,000. And since we have you on audio admitting your part in the arranged marriage, I don't know how long you'll go to prison for and how big your fine will be, but you brokered the deal in, in the streets. That's called procurement. That's like a pimp or somebody who say, hey man, you know why I can get some drugs? I can get a, uh, get a hooker. That's procurement. You brokered the deal. You're just as guilty as the two people that got married. You're going to get the same punishment. It's a felony. You're going to be a convicted felon. If somebody feels led by the spirit to report you to ICE. Mm. Be a bad way to spend the next five years, wouldn't it? I don't know. Uh, Rhonda, I really don't know. I have a theory, but I, I've talked about it in the past. Five years in prison, $250,000 fine. You arranged a marriage. I'm not telling what we heard somebody else say. You, they heard you say. We heard you on the audio. Admit to the arrangement. And if somebody feels led by the spirit to call ICE, call that number that I put on the screen there and report you and supply a video with your voice on it saying that you uh, arranged a marriage and then the man that's on the, that you arranged a marriage for having to be your lover your gay lover, and he admitted that he was your gay lover. Ooh, ain't gonna look good. Ain't gonna look good for you. Because the feds gonna always get their licks back. You believe that? <laughs> Just telling you. 
You don't want to play with the feds. They play for keeps. <laughs> that went way back biblical bed chamber. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I'm sorry. So I'm just saying that that's something to think about. Ethan Bit to see. Uh oh, Bitcoin. Hold on. I, I'm just curious. You know, when people troll me. And I go and I look on their page. They don't have no video content, no subscribers. Or if they are subscribed, they tend to be sus subscribed to the people that don't like me. And that's why I get the biggest kick out of when they come to troll me. Because the only thing I do is report them for spam and harassment and stuff like that. And then I block them. But when I get trolled and I get people to say slick comments to me, what that tells me is one thing. I must be on to something. I'm doing something right. Because the enemy is scared and upset. And they want to attack me. I used to get mad. But then I realized I wear it as a badge of honor now. Because. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Nobody's keeping you over here, Ethan. And for the record, Ethan, with a name like Ethan, uh, I see why you mad, because if I'd be mad too if my name was Ethan, your mama should have swallowed you instead of having you. Have a nice life. I'm not mad. I'm not mad at all. Oh, Betty, I'm so sorry. Oh, Betty, oh, shoot. I hit Betty by accident. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I got to get that back. Uh-oh. Uh, Betty Yellick. Um, hold on. I got to straighten that out because Betty is my moderator. Hold on. Oh, I let that knucklehead distract me. I shouldn't have did that. I, I apologize, Betty Yolick. Hold on, Betty. So, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. So, um, let me see who my moderators are. I am so sorry, Betty. Uh oh, I am sorry. Okay, you good, Betty? You should be straight. Did I get it right? I apologize, Betty. That that shouldn't have happened. Oh, okay. Just want to make sure. Well, anyway, I'm back. I'm back. I just want to make sure. I didn't want to screw that up. I want to get that crazy Ethan person out of here. So anyway. Yeah, I'm back. So anyhow. I uh 
How can somebody named Ethan come and pick with me? That's just free. That's just free comedy right there. Uh, anybody named Ethan? Probably some little angry joker. Man, God bless you, Ethan, from the bushes. So, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I did. I did, Uncle Fred. I already did. That's what I was taking care of. So, so anyway, if you're going to have this big interview in LA, which means my theory is the only person in LA that you go talk to would be Armand Wiggins. Because the only people that got platforms big enough that you're still cool with to even host you, because you can't go to Tasha K because she don't like you. Uh, it's got to be Storm Monroe or Armand Wiggins. Puss in Boots, your, your PR person slash boo thing that you're ashamed to be seen publicly with platform not big enough. So you got to go to California and do an interview with Armand Wiggins. But here's the thing. Armand Wiggins is now on Fox Soul. He's not going to mess up his Fox Soul money messing with you because the first thing that's going to happen because people are going to feel led by the spirit. If he interviews you on his personal platform away from Fox Soul, people are going to contact Fox Soul and say, hey, why is an employee of your network or your, your platform interviewing a man that's accused of child molestation, embezzling funds, uh, having a homosexual affair with, with, for 13 years with somebody all while he was married, and he's accused of knowingly spreading HIV and AIDS, HIV, the HIV virus to uh, somebody that he's alleged to have victimized, and he's given this man a platform a, a show, an interview on his platform. Is this somebody that you want to have connected to your network? Uh, is this somebody that your sponsors are going to be okay with? So he's not going to touch you with a 10-foot pole. So that's my theory why you haven't done this big interview, because he's probably told you, probably, hey, man, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. He's not going to mess up his regular money, because he got a regular... He's not living off Google checks now. He got a regular salary coming in, because they pay him regularly. And he's not going to mess up a sure thing messing with you and your foolishness. Because you you here today may be and the way things looking to go on tomorrow. He's not going to mess with you. That's why you haven't done your big L.A. interview. And see, if you go Storm Monroe, mm -hmm, a Storm Monroe right there in Atlanta, so you ain't got to go out to L.A. to be interviewed by him. All you gotta do is drive down the freeway. Cause you live in, you know, you like to brag that you got Cardi B's old house and you rent rent it out. But see, newsflash, all the houses that Larry Reed brags about, he has them in the name of the church. And that's how he writes all that off. The the uh, places in LA, the places in Miami, the place in Charlotte, the two in Atlanta, plus the little apartments here and there. All of it's in the church's name. So you're looking at about $75,000 a month in rents. So you're looking at all of that. Real time. Armand has been on that show now, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he been doing it for about a month now. Yeah, see, that's how you do it. See, he, everything, he puts it over into my bullshit now network's name. So the properties, that's why when people try to go serve him, they're looking for his address, but his address ain't on nothing. It's in the name of the church. But when he gets mail... His mail goes to the address of the properties that he leases in the name of the church. So that's why you see the addresses that, you know, if person do their due diligence. Um, and like me, I'm a process server, so I know how to find people. You know, 
because Chamaco stay in, in one house and he in another. And so uh, when um, Bishop Whitehead was trying to serve him, he grabbed his bag and went from there over there where Chamaco was and went to the other house that Carter B used and still owns. And he's over there. He was hiding out because him and Lester was over there. And and then when he saw the smoke was clear, then he came back over, you know, to and fro. So that's how that gets down. But yeah, y'all please click like on this video though and share. So Armand Wig is not gonna touch you, sir. Because it's bad for business. It's bad for his bottom line, which is not going to mess with you. And you were counting on that to get your side out to a large market. Because your numbers are dropping. Your Patreon dollars is dropping. Uh, the 888 and all the other crap. Oh, yeah. yeah Archbishop is creepy. Um, so, see, here's the thing. You needed Armand really bad. He don't need you. He doing well on Fox. So he's trying to take his platform and his career and, and he's going this way and he's not going to fool with you. Nope, not going to fool with you. So, yeah, y'all please bless the Cash App. My Cash App right there. Uh, PayPal, my Zelle and Venmo and all that. Right there, right there, right there, right there. Please, y'all, I appreciate it. Jim and Tammy really need you. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so what happened was you thought you were going to come here, put your suitcase down and shave, shower and all that, and then hop out there to L.A. and and, and tell a few lies on a big platform and all of this was going to go away. No. And then your boy, all oh, he him hurt. His feeling was hurt so, and I had to go in and make and I had to go make fun a little bit yesterday because Puss and Boots was hurt that he didn't get him a Fox Soul job. But who do you think? And I said it yesterday. Who do you think Fox Soul was gonna do? Do you Fox Soul? Do you think Fox Soul was gonna hire him, this guy here? Do you think Fox Soul was gonna hire this guy right here? Close your eyes if you're traumatized. Do you think Fox Soul was gonna hire this guy right here? To come on their platform, rocking around with a, a red flashlight for three hours and 38 minutes, high on everything, arrested for prostitution. Do you think they were going to hire him? He actually thought Fox Soul was going to give him a job on one of their programs. This guy, really, 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 really. Follow the arrows, prostitution, prostitution. Really? He really thought he was going to get a job on Fox Foxhole. Isn't that tragic? Isn't that tragic? I think, I think what happened, somebody will live by the spirit. I think somebody was led by the spirit and uh, uh, <laughs> like, hey, I don't think you want this guy on your on your network. Um, he's bad for business. I think you might want to take a look at that. I'm just saying that's what I think happened. I don't know. Um, but hey, People getting their licks back in 2024. That's all I'm saying. Ain't that right, Amy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're getting all their licks back, ain't they, baby? Yeah, yeah. Oh, he was in here feeling he was hurt. And, 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 and Larry had to go over there and say, bigger and better things are coming your way. Yes. It's called, it's called getting your resume online and applying for regular daytime jobs because your money supplier is going broke so you, you're gonna have ever as the old folks say every tub got to sit on its own bottom now you got to go and get get you a regular day job and it's gonna be mighty hard for you because you have no job skills
he's not qualified to be on a major network. See, that hood stuff that you do on YouTube and Patreon, that don't fly on corporate sponsor world. You know, today's episode is sponsored by, no, nobody's going to attach their dollars. We're talking millions of dollars. Nobody's going to put money behind you with your, with your uh, Ashley Simpson wig and, and all of that. Nobody's going to put money behind it. You have to appeal to more than your niche market. You have to appeal to the broader scope. Everybody ain't walking around looking crazy like that. You got to appeal to more than the, the church, the gay church dudes, the, the power bottoms and and the closeted gay preachers you got to appeal to more than those those niche groups you got and and the women that love the uh that love the messy church queen you got to appeal to more you got to appeal to more than that niche of uh group you got to be able to appeal to a straight man a straight woman uh old and young East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, Down South. You got to be able to appeal international. You got to be able to appeal to cross sections of people. And nobody's going to sit there and look at that. And then not only look at that, know your background, because your background is going to pop up. Because people feel led by the spirit. But like, hey, this man's arrested for prostitution. This man's out here windmilling for a man that's accused of child molestation and spreading HIV and stealing church funds. He's windmilling for a guy that's accused of doing those things, and he's been arrested for prostitution. His character is lower than well shit. Ain't nothing going on with no Jake's lawsuit. It's all smoke and mirrors. They tried to shake that man down for money, and he didn't buckle. He stood his ground, 10 toes down. So it was supposed to be this big announcement. Here it is, March, and we ain't had no big announcement yet. Ain't that right, Amy? Yeah. He just a lying scallywag, ain't he, baby? Yes, he is. Yeah, he just a lying devil from the pits of hell, ain't he? Yeah, he yeah. Growl at him, baby. Growl at him. Get him. Get him. <laughs> Woo, boy. So, I'm making good time. Yeah, I'm making good time. So, two things we're taking away. Yeah, you, we know you're lying. Been lying. Been lying since I've been dealing with you. Four and a half years or better. Ain't no big lawsuit from Manasseh Jordan or, or others. Manasseh Jordan at all. No lawsuit. No lawsuit filed. No mention of, of a lawsuit by him or his daddy. Because nobody, unless there's a video somewhere that I haven't seen, I have never heard Manasseh Jordan come out publicly and say that he was going to sue Larry Reed. I mean, yeah, that he was going to sue T.D. Jakes. I've never heard that. I've always heard Larry Reed say that. I've never heard Manasseh Jordan say that. I've always heard Larry Reed say that. And I never heard the daddy say that anything. Only thing uh, Bernard Jordan ever said, I support my son. And then he pulled way back. All we ever heard was the, the mouthpiece, the sick little mouthpiece out here talking. That's all we heard. We heard the sick man with all them band-aids and, and, and scars and scratches. That's what we heard talking. We heard the sick man talking. We didn't hear nobody else talking. We heard the sick man talking. We heard this guy talking. With all them, uh, all them uh, bumps, lesions, and 
Now all of a sudden, oh, I'm taking Botox. Botox takes wrinkles away. It don't stop lesions. It don't stop lesions. It don't stop skin lesions. It don't stop skin lesions around your face and while you're wearing dark, dark shades and and, and hats indoors and turbans. Google what what causes skin lesions if you if if you feel so led by the spirit. Go look look that up. Go look that up. That's very educational. That's all I say. Go look it up. Don't take my. I've always told you. Don't believe me. Go look it up for yourself. I've always said. Don't believe me. Google it. Research it for yourself. Research it for yourself. Don't believe nothing I say. Look it up for yourself. Go look the information up for yourself. Google skin lesions, HIV. Google it for yourself. Look at what you see and compare the two. And, and make up your own mind. Don't rely on me. I'm not, I'm not a medical professional. I'm a layman, so I'm just basing what I see and what I read and coming up with my own opinion. All I know is that when the North Carolina Health Department came to the door to knock, certain people were in the house and they heard the discussion that was had. And I'm just going to leave it right there. Hmm. What live chat, Betty? What live chat are you talking about? Hmm. Man, uh, y'all figure that out. We don't need no show from you unless you're going to admit to what happened with them three young men, admit the embezzlement and misappropriation of funds and PPP loans, your health status, and that arranged marriage. Because that arranged marriage is a felony. That's going to land you in prison. Uh, your health status, you out here sleeping out with people and not using protection. You had a 13-year relationship. And you were, and there's other people, Lester and, and Vincent and other people that said you slept with them and you weren't using protection and you weren't informing them of your status. That's also a felony. Both of those right there land you in prison. The big rat, you going to jail. You going to jail now. So I suggest, unless you're going to address those issues, we don't want to hear it because we already know you're gay. We know you're gay. That's no shocker. Everybody in that house, I mean, the canary, everybody. Everybody got to get tested. Everybody. Because according to Vincent, you have slept with everybody in that house. Everybody in that house must be tested. Because let's just say you slept with everybody in the house, as Vincent said, and then they went outside the house. Because as we know, you, he said you slept with Chamaco. Chamaco had a wife. Chamaco and his wife had a son. So that means if you had something and you was dealing with him, he was he possibly could have passed it on to your his wife, your cousin, who's now married to your 
lover, see, see, the reason is you're going to get popped for that arranged marriage. The soccer player, Lester, married your cousin who used to be Chamaco's, is Chamaco's ex-wife. And Chamaco officiated the wedding because we got the marriage license that shows that he was the one that officiated the wedding. And you don't think the feds is going to be like, the antennas ain't going to be like, oh, this son ain't right. The man who used to be married to this woman is the one who officiated the wedding of this woman and a new man. And then we got this new man has already come on the internet and admitted that he was the lover of the man. Oh, boy. Mm. Yeah, I see why you getting skinny. You trying to be able to fit between them jail bars when they put you in jail. But there's like lots and lots of rolls of barbed wire and razor wire. You can't get through that. Mm -mm. Five years in prison, $250,000 fine. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It is a felony. Cause see, North Carolina don't play about that. Mm. Felony. North Carolina. And here's the thing. All of this stuff is happening to you for two reasons. The main one, I'm a, well, a serious, a little smaller, but all of this confusion and hell broke loose in your life because you in 2018 or 2019, somewhere in thereabouts, you said Jesus was a liar. When you said that on your program, your life went ever, from that point. There has been chaos and hell breaking loose in your life ever since you made that statement. And then you tried to back it up, back up off it, but it was too late. You said Jesus was a liar on your platform. You said that, not me. I really didn't even know who you were at that time, really. But when I heard that, I was like, dude really did just say that. Did he just say that Jesus was a liar? Uh, oh my, that ain't good. Please, y'all, click like. For the 300 of you are here, I really would appreciate it. If you haven't clicked like already, please do so and share my video. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd be very happy to have you as a subscriber. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm. Well, see what happened, sir. The person, as we now know, that they were a virgin. And they said that you essayed them. And then when they went to take a physical, they found out that they were HIV positive. And they asked them who the person was. And you had been the only person they had been with because you essayed them. And so when they called you to try to get you to come in, you wouldn't show. They sent you a letter trying to get you to come in. You wouldn't show. And then they came to the house. And there were certain people there when they showed up at your door and they took you out and they, and you, and the lie you told was that they, oh, they just gave me some penicillin. They don't give you penicillin, sir, in your house. If they're going to give you any medication, they have to take you and you have to go back with them or you have to drive and meet them back and they treat you at the facility. They don't give you medication in your house, sir. That's a good lie. You, you tried to tell to the people that were like, what's going on? 
But uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. My, my, my. You uh mm, mm, mm. sir. Mm, mm, mm. CTV cannot save you now no more. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. He cannot save you anymore. When the health department came to your house and they talked to you, they told you what was going on because a person listed you as their partner, that their only partner, because they accused you of SA. That's right, puppy mother time. That's right. So they come to your house because you are the person that they, you are patient zero. In my lamest term, because I watched this movie called Puppy Mother. You're patient zero in this young man world. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're getting it. We're getting it. We're getting it. Documentations right here. Paperworks. So they turned you into the state of North Carolina. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. They turned you into the state. Then you relocated to Georgia. Georgia, Georgia, the whole day through. <laughs> you got in there, you haul me like, boom, 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 Because your, your relative said they came by the house for because you didn't show up to cry rehearsal. Look, she looked in the window. All your stuff is gone. You didn't tell nobody in the family or nothing. You just left. Went to Atlanta. Contagion. That's right. Just like in the movie Contagion. That's right. You went. And you disappeared. Because you knew you had been caught. just speculate allegedly but the point is ain't no allegedly the health department showed up at your house that's not allegedly that's a documented fact that's a documented fact that's not an alleged the health department showed up to your door you refuse to respond to the phone, to the letter, all the other requests. You you didn't show up. You didn't comply. You didn't respond. My, my, my. You didn't. So they had to come out there in the car. But well, see, what you didn't realize, sir, for us people with smart parts, every time they called you and you didn't respond, they keep a record of it. Every time they sent you some something in the mail, a certified mail, whatever, and they came back and it wasn't open or whatever, they keep a record of that. And then when they came to your house, oh, that's documented. So when you remember when you sued me and when your attorney found out that I was getting ready to subpoena those documents, and that's when, oh, we need to mediate. That's when you want to mediate because I knew about those documents and I was going to bring them into open court and they were going to become public record forever. And you couldn't have that because then the whole world would have known what they now know anyway. And it wasn't, and I didn't have to open my mouth and say nothing because other people started talking. See how that worked? Thought you had silenced me and everything was gonna go away. And then your lover of 13 years has a has, has a come to Jesus moment. <laughs> talking to a therapist working on getting right healing themselves they confess what they had done wrong 
the soccer player came forward and, and admit, admitted what he had done, and uh, and the floodgate flew open. So, right there in that health department, and you knew I knew about it, and that's when you wanted to mediate. But you out here, you got conscious TV. Oh, we won the case. Well, no, you asked for the mediation, but you never tell people that. You were the one that requested the mediation. I didn't. I went along with it because at the time, I just didn't have the energy or the finances to fight it any longer. My dad was dying. He eventually died. I ended up getting COVID and getting sick, sicker. My body was weakened. My mother was in the beginning stages of dementia. She eventually died. I had a stroke from the stress and the harassment of your people that you sent out here to harass me every day. I had to get a restraining order against Conscious TV and that boy that got shot by his own brother down in Texas. So I just said, you know what the heck with it. You don't talk about me. I don't talk about you. But your employees kept harassing me. But you, in the meantime, kept dragging me into court. Oh, he's violating the, the agreement. I, I never violated anything. And then finally, I got tired and I did a video addressing the judge. And the judge got to see all the stuff that I was going to present in court. And he was like, Mm -mm. but you don't tell people that part you don't tell the people that part and I just sat here and I got I got I'm gonna be honest I got frustrated I said God why are you letting this evil man prosper and I'm out here trying to do the right thing and I'm catching hell I'm being harassed why And I got frustrated. I can't lie. But I was reminded of when I was to sleep at night, I slept peacefully because I hadn't hurt anybody. I didn't have to wake up worrying about if somebody going to try to take what little things I got or harm me because I hadn't done anything to anybody. So I, my mind was clear at night. I slept well. But see, you weren't sleeping well. You was worried every night. Oh, is this going to be the day? that I wake up and my my secret is exposed. Is this going to be the day that my secret is going to be revealed that I'm gay? That, that these three young men going to come out and one of them going to say that I did something, that I committed a crime against him Two crimes, not just one, two crimes, two, two, two crimes. And then next thing you know, two people in your inner circle admitted to, well, Vincent admitted his role in the, the spending of the money and the, 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 the homosexual 13 year relationship that y'all had. Then Lester came forward with his one year and how how you were spending money on him, the church's money. Both of these men admitted that you were um, spending the church's money on them. And yeah. Lester admitted the medication he saw in your house. Lester admitted that you paid for him to take prep. You paid for his prescription for prep. He admitted he saw the medication that you had in your house and it was and he, he recognized it. it was HIV medication in your name. So it ain't me. He said it. He said that on Tasha K's uh, platform. You never sued Tasha K. You haven't sued Vincent. You haven't sued him, but you did sue me.
Mm-hmm. Lady Silver Fox, I do too. This is just the beginning. We got five people. We got three survivors, a lover of 13 years, a lover of one year. Those are five young. Those are, it will start out with three men, young men, under age. Now you got a, a person that was in a 13 year relationship and then a person that was in a one year relationship, all male. You notice the thing, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, something I want to point out to you, and I'm going to get you out here in a little bit. None of his accusers are female. Not a one. Has anybody anywhere, and I'll, I'll look in the chat while I say this, has anybody noticed, heard, or read anywhere that any of Larry Reed's accusers are female? I would. I haven't seen any female come forward and say, Larry Reed did this, this, and this to me. I have not heard one female. Chat looking mighty dry over there, so I must be on to something. Mm. Still ain't nobody type. Uh, uh, yeah, I heard of a woman. I ain't heard of one woman yet. Nope. Anybody else? I see a nope. Anybody got a yes or just going to be some more no's and nope's? Hmm? No females. Nah. Hold on. That's a good question. Hold on. Let us look, ladies and gentlemen. Let us look. Hold on. Mm, I'm going to blow this up big. Y'all need to see this, not me. All righty. Hold on. Y'all don't need to see me. All right. I'm going to take his off. Now, this is just Ohio. I'm just going to look. I'm just going to talk about Ohio. Uh, From donating infected fluids to purposely transmitting disease to others, these statutes cover a wide range of conduct. The penalties are harsh can someone go to jail for spreading hiv some states have a maximum sentence of up to life in prison while others have a maximum sentence that is less than 10 years it's a state to state depends on which state you're in you can get anywhere from 10 years to life yeah Mm. Can you go to jail for not telling somebody you have HPV? It is uh, legal and is civilly and criminally liable to knowingly or recklessly transmit a STD. Uh Uh-huh. You must inform the person. Mm -mm Mm-mm-mm.
Yes, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is it right there. My, my, my. Mm -mm -mm. So, if one of those people that was with you, Larry Reed, and what they say is true about you, and they go out because we, well, the birdie told me that you refuse to use condoms. And uh, that was what was told to me by somebody that slept with you, that you refuse to use condoms. So if you refuse to use condoms and you knew you had this situation, you have this situation. Hello, Marcellus. And you have this situation and you refuse to wear condoms. So that means you are intentionally infecting, putting people at risk. And if one of those people becomes infected because of it, and you haven't told them prior to that you have this said affliction, you are facing time in prison and you are facing a serious issue in civil court. So if anybody out there that's listening to me, if you have slept with Larry Reed, you need to get tested immediately if you haven't already done so. If you have come to test it for positive for the you know what's, you need to have contact him and uh, handle things as you see fit criminally or legally or civilly. I ain't got nothing to do with that. I'm not a lawyer. I can't offer legal advice to you. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I don't know what the statute of limitations are. That just depends on the state. I don't know. But um, when you are accused of infecting a child, I think they 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 uh, do what's called a look back law. They throw that at that age uh, that statute of limitations out the window. So you in trouble. You in trouble. Trouble on that. Now that whole arranged marriage thing that you're on audio admitting that you were a part of and that you helped broker the deal and set that up, that's a five. You're looking at right there. Uh, if somebody feels led by the spirit to contact ICE when their office open up tomorrow and give them a copy of your audio of you admitting that you brokered said deal, and they also supply them with a copy of the marriage license that's registered with Fulton County, Georgia, with uh, Chamaco's name as the officiant and your cousin as the bride and Lester Pelcare as the groom and you've admitted that you arranged that marriage you know and there was money exchange and there's your audio of you <coughs> admitting just that um, that's five years in prison and $250,000 fine and they're going to come arrest you yeah they're going to come arrest you you're going to be doing your next Larry live from behind prison walls. Mm -hmm. That is non-negotiable. That's a felony. And if anybody feels led by the spirit to contact ICE and report you, all the king's horses, all the king's men ain't going to put Humpty together again. you going to jail. Because it's clear cut. It's you on audio admitting that you arranged this marriage between your lover and your cousin. And there was money given to her because she's a lesbian, so she has no interest in men whatsoever. And then her ex-husband, who's also your lover, officiated the wedding because you brokered the deal. 
and just you on audio admitting that. They got married in your house. You had your lover officiating the wedding and your other lover marrying your cousin. And you broke up the deal. And it's on audio, you admitting it to your other lover of 13 years. See how that go? You were spreading your seed around too much. Your lover of 13 years, you was admitting that on audio to him that you arranged this marriage of your soccer lover to your cousin who's a lesbian and her ex-husband who's also one of your concubines. He was officiating the wedding. That's insanity. <laughs> It's a shame that Jer uh, Maury Povich and uh, Jerry Springer ain't still on the air. They'd have a field day with this. Mm -mm. If Ayanna Van Zandt was still doing show, she'd just say, you know what? I, I can't do nothing with this. She'd just light her a joint and drink up some Hennessy right down her show. But this some bullshit right here. Yep. Oh, fix it, G. That was she. <laughs> that was she do. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be sitting next to her drinking my dark liquor, smoking cigar. Yep, this some bullshit right here. I told you, you thought I was lying, didn't you? It's bullshit right here. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, you look over this way. Immigration got you. Five years, two hundred fifty thousand. They got you. I mean, all if if a group of people call or one person call and they and they start investigating. Somebody gonna be led by the spirit. I, I feel it in my in my and what that lady that in me be be shut them out and we laugh we, we laugh offline about her. E b b b shut them out or whatever her name is. I got I gotta get it get it going here. No, I think you said it best. I'm gonna I'm use your words. I'm gonna use your words right now because you said it best, better than that Shanama lady. You said it better than anybody. This is what you said. Glory to God. Some of your faces are gonna be in the newspaper. Huh? Some of your faces are gonna be on TV. Huh? Showing the before and the after picture. Huh? Glory to God because God. Was he saying olive oil, olive oil, olive oil? Was that what he was saying? I could swear that's what he was saying. Olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. Aruba, Aruba Dookie. <laughs> A Ruba Dookie, Amy. A Ruba Dookie. Huh? A Ruba Dookie. Amy. Get him. Get him. Get him, Amy. Come on. Let's go get him. Get him in. <laughs> Get him in. Get him in. Get him. Aruba Duke. Aruba Duke. Aruba Duke. Aruba Duke. <laughs> okay, go back over there, kill him. Go back over there. It's all right. It's all right. Get back on the blanket. Get up, get up on the blank. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Odette. Don't say olive oil, olive oil, olive oil, olive oil. <laughs> hey, hey, that don't 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 take no olive oil to that jail cell. Mm -mm. Cause they gonna have you on that med unit if you go to jail. They ain't gonna put you in general population. I know that much. You be around of like minded individuals. But yeah, if you knowingly 
have unprotected sex and you don't inform your partners, gay or straight, and we know you're gay now. I mean, we already knew you were gay. We already knew you was gay. We already. So you doing an Armand Wiggins interview? Well, yes, I do. I'm saying gender loving. That ain't no newsflash. You could have just done a text and and save everybody time on stopping what they were doing. And we knew that. Unless, like I say, unless you're going to talk about your three survivors, embezzlement and misappropriation of funds, PPP loan scam, your health status, and that arranged marriage, we ain't got nothing to talk about. You can keep that. You can keep your press conference. You can keep it. CTV can't save you this time. All your trinkets and cash out, his party city wigs, he can't. It's no spin he can put on this. Your love of 13 years, kick the door off your closet. There's no closet for you to come out of. You have a walk-in closet. You don't have a closet no more. You just got a walk-in closet. You ain't got no door on it, nothing. You ain't even got a, a, a sheet or nothing across that door. You just walk right on in. Just You just got a, you got a sunroom, I guess. Hell, I don't know. You ain't got no closet. You you just got an extra room. You ain't no secrets in there. 13 years. That's a full, that's longer than most people's marriages. I mean, that's real. You got more concubines than Solomon, than King Solomon in the Bible. Use a nasty rascal. A glass sliding door, Christine, more than anything, a glass sliding door. You see right in there. You ain't no secrets. You ain't, you ain't got no closet to come out of. You ain't got no secrets. Uh, that man exposed everything that y'all did together. 13 years. Then Lester came out here and he was talking about the, my, the apartments and how much they were costing. No, Mickey. He spoke. He was supposed to do this big um, interview in California. He was gonna fly out to California. That's what he was announcing to his people on his channel. Was that oh, when I get back, I'm gonna go to California. I'm gonna do this interview. And the only person out there in California that we just got a platform big enough for him to come out and tell these lies on would be Armand Wiggins. But see, what happened? They worked against him. In the meantime, while he was glow trotting with his concubines. Armand Wiggins got a job on Fox Soul, and he's not going to jeopardize his job on Fox Soul interviewing him. Because as soon as he interviews Larry, people are going to contact Fox Soul and ask Fox Soul, hey, why is your employee interviewing a man that's accused of molesting children and infecting people with HIV and stealing church funds and living the high life? Why is Armand Wiggins an employee of your network doing that? You know, because people are going to feel led by the spirit to ask those questions. And then Armand Wiggins is going to lose his job. And Armand Wiggins ain't going to mess his bag up when he just got the bag this month, back last month in February. He's not going to mess that bag up fooling with Larry Reed. So that's why Larry Reed would have been did this little interview in California. But I, I can tell you this probably how I went. Probably pick that phone up. Hello, may I speak to Armand? Yeah, yeah. Hello. You can't get in here. You can't get in here. No, 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 no. That ship has sailed. You can't get in here. You can't get in here. Uh, no, no. Look here, man. I, I, I'm just not going to be able to do it. You're bad for business. That's that's what happened. That's what happened. Don't Because uh, he don't have to. The uh, only other person with a platform big enough for him to go lie on would be Storm Monroe. And Storm Monroe lives right there in Atlanta. Yeah, you're right. Solomon's concubines are all women, but he's got the flip of that. Well, so so this is what's going on. So that plan has blown up in his face. Lip. So, because that man ain't messing his bag up. That's what that's with Larry. So, uh, and windmilling, because People are lighting conscious TV up in his own chats. Like, 
you know Larry will learn, da da da. And then they go in there and they delete the comments and, and block the people. I mean, people come in there every day, lighting them up, lighting them up in his own chats. And boom, and they and they going over there to Larry and Larry getting lit up too. Uh, when you gonna tell the truth uh, about this? You know, when you know you're gay and da da da. da and they saying all this stuff. And for years, Jordan and Larry have tried to segue into that LGBTQ community because there's a lot of money to be made over there. But see, if they go over there, they lose their female church fan base. And them women give a lot of money. Them women will forgive you for everything under the sun but being gay and see if they go over there they can't come back to them seventh grade educated church women that they're not going to let them come back and their money is not going to gonna follow them over there to the lgbtq community that's how it works so They've been trying to get in there because it's a lot of money for them to be made and see their God is the almighty dollar. Because uh, Larry Reed made a statement years ago when I first started looking into his background. He said, I'll do a story about my own mama if she do something. He said that out of his own mouth. I didn't say it. He did. So that let me know his God is money. And the person that's his mentor is money. They love that receptacles. They love that. So that's what they into. But the the interview that he was saying he was going to do, And that blew up in his face. Now he's he's like a, a ship that's permanently out to sea. Can't kick, can't come ashore nowhere. Not welcome anywhere. And Armand Wiggins has a bigger name than Storm Monroe. So He's like a a, a a a plan B, but he was really banking on Armand Wiggins because Armand Wiggins has that star power. And Armand not messing his bag up. And that's what Larry. So in, in OCTV, I know you listen to CTV. I'm going to say something to you. You've been bought and paid for with little trinkets, little cash here, little cash there, pay your rent here, pay your, toot your booty up here, toot your booty up there. he do this for you. But he's never taken a picture with you. He's never been seen with you publicly. He's embarrassed to uh, let people know that you've been together socially I'm, I'm keeping my words y'all was kicking it offline y'all y'all were kicking it y'all was kicking it you wanted a few holes that he keeps happy and see Yeah, I was people were talking about that video that he did, but it's an old video that he um rehashed and resubmitted so that he don't look the same in that video. If you catch my drift, he don't look the same. Uh, so CTV. He don't like being seen with you. When he has these big events, you're never invited.
Exactly, Kelly. Hello, oh, this is the way. Exactly my point. People will be led by the spirit to act fox. So, hey, why do you have someone here that's affiliated with oh, Larry Reed? And this is what Larry Reed's accused of doing. Just like when Larry Reed was on that television show, people contacted the executive producers of the show and said, hey, uh, you're a faith-based show. Why do you have someone on your show that's accused of do 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 and quite a few people reached in, reached out to those people because they felt led by the spirit. And uh, hmm. <laughs> so, but you see TV. That's got to be a bad feeling. I'm going to talk about this in a minute. Stick a pen right there. I'm going to leave it up while I'm talking. You got to feel real bad. He's ashamed of you. He's ashamed of being seen with you publicly. He, he, he'll come on your platform. He'll, I want to say something else. He'll come somewhere else. But he'll come on your platform. He'll buy you little trinkets, buy you a little Hyundai or whatever car. And, uh, Pay your rent, give you something to grow. Cause you gain a lot of weight, so you're eating good. So you got the best of food, the best of drugs. Uh, you know you ain't starving no more. And uh, but that's where it stops. That's where it stops. You will never be invited to Dubai. You'll never go to Mexico or. Dominican Republic, places like that. He's not going to take you to those places. You get a bathrobe in a hotel in Tennessee. That's what you get. The bathrobe came with the room. You, you were doing a video and bragging about it. You're not used to that kind of thing. That's what that's what you get when you go to those type hotels. The bathrobe comes in the room. It's a terracloth bathrobe, and it comes with the room. That's what you get. But you, it was a big thing to you because you were taking pictures in it. You was all draped in it. You was happy. I'm pretty sure you took the robe with you when you left because you don't have one like that at home. Um, but it must feel very bad to know that he's ashamed of you to be seen with you publicly. He'll sleep with you. He'll give you a little hush money. He'll pay your bills. Buy, put some groceries in your, in, uh, in your um, refrigerator from food line. Put some money in your Hyundai. He'll do that. Yeah, Kim, uh, that's how the original Armand Wiggins interview happened, allegedly, in Storm Monroe. A lot of people were getting nice donations. Uh, Sadie, that's what you did wrong. I sleep well at night. Um, I sleep very good. I have plenty of peace. I have a Chihuahua named Amy. You, you didn't see Amy over here? Hey, Amy. She said, I don't have no peace. I, I don't have peace. What you do if somebody try to take my peace? What you do to him? Get him. Get him, Amy. Get him. Get him. See? I'm, I'm okay over here. So, <laughs> hey, good girl. Yes, sir. good girl. Yeah, I know. Hey, ain't nobody coming to get me. It's all right. 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 Shh. It's all right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You want to go outside? Huh? Okay. I know it's snowing. I know you don't want to go outside. No. So anyway. So anyway, this right here. You watch whenever he does find some platform that will entertain him. You watch what I tell you is going to happen. You heard it here first. He's going to accuse me of outing him. He's going to try to label me as being homophobic. 
textbook. It's going to happen. Watch what I tell you. I'm homophobic. I'm going to be labeled as homophobic. And I'm going to be accused of outing him. And then he's going to go full fledged gay. Because that's what he's going to head it towards anyway. He's been gradually going that way because more and more people have exposed him. <clears throat> Remember the church he had in North Carolina that he sold and he walked away, the last physical church he had? He sold that church to a LGBT congregation. So, but you watch what I tell you. You heard it here first. Daryl Moore's going to be labeled homophobic and I outed him. And he'll garner sympathy. And, and then he's going to come, ladies and gentlemen, I am a gay man. This is my true. And he's going to do that. And for $8.88, I'll help you with the steps to come into the reality and acceptance of your truth as well. And then he's going to get some money and some donation. And then he's going to... And then he's going to do the... Uh, olive oil, and he's going to do this again. I, this just tickles my soul. I'm going to play it one more time, though. Glory to God. Some of your faces are going to be in the newspaper. Huh? Some of your faces are going to be on TV. Huh? Showing the before and the after picture. Huh? Glory to God. Because God... Some just funny to me. That it's just funny to me. I'm sorry. Like I said, real time. He can't do a video and say that. We already knew. We already been saying it for years. He'll just be admitting what we already knew. I mean, hey, a root, a root of the key. He'll just be admitting what we already know. That's not a shocker. That's not a news flash. And he knows he likes to sensationalize stuff. Yeah. That was that was his big, that was his big. I've never heard, I've heard people being called from being gossipers and all that to be a minister or called from being the secular world into ministry, never from the ministry into the foolishness. Those the monies is what called him into this. And see, but everything, yeah, you know, bless the cash. Everything that he is reaping now was but it, it's all happened since that day when he got on his platform and said Jesus was a liar. And when he did that. And when he did what he did to Jimmy Battles, that and then what he did to Jimmy Battles, the floodgate in his life flew open. And that's when the three accusers, because they all watched Jimmy Battles interview. And something in that Jimmy Battles story gave them strength and courage to come forward. And then they told their story. And when they told their story, and then other people started discussing their story, and other people started exposing Larry Reed. And then he realized, at first, I was just one voice in the wind. I was insignificant. He was just, oh, shoot. He was just, you know, he's nothing. He's nobody. But then nothing and nobody started getting in contact with people from their hometown in Pikesville, North Carolina, who went to school with you who knew names, who said, 
talk to this person over here. This person over here works with his sister. This person over here works with his other sister. This person works with his brother. This was the guy, name of the guy that he used to meet under the bleachers before school every day. This was his name. These are the people in the church. This is the name of the church that Shamako's daddy had that Larry had him taken away from. This is this and this is contacting people. So then, hey, wait a minute, he ain't insignificant. He, he know where I'm from. And then I got sued because I exposed him. I got sued. But Tasha K ain't been sued. Tasha K interviewed Levantre. Tasha K interviewed Lester Peltier. She ain't been sued yet. She interviewed the original accuser and the soccer player. She ain't been sued. Mm-mm. This guy has. Lester Peltier had been sued. This guy had. Vincent Hill has been sued. This guy had. Why do you think that? If I'm not, if I'm not a significant or, or I don't matter, why was I sued and not Tasha K? Tasha K has a million and a half subscribers. I got under ten thousand between two channels. I got 10,000 between two channels. She got a million five. She ain't been sued. Her, if she says boo, a million five people hear that. I don't have a million and five subscribers, a million and five people watching me. She ain't been sued. Because why? Because she knows where the bodies are buried. If he sue her, she'll fight him all the way to the Supreme Court if need be. Bishop Whitehead sued you for $20 million and you hid out from the place that you normally live and you moved, you was hiding over in the mansion that, that you rent from Cardi B. You and Lester, because Lester said that's where y'all were while you was hiding out from the process server. So when the process server came to the door, Chamaco and Latrice were answering, Larry Reed don't live here. Because you was hiding over there in Cardi B's mansion. How would I know that? Well, see, when you thought you had me and you scared the other people that was first originally talking about you. But see, God always works in mysterious ways. All I had to do, because we told you, for the rest of your life, every time you come online, you was going to have to answer to about those three people that accused you, those three young men. And then every time you came online, well, what about the three young men? Like, you get mad, you block and delete people, you block and delete people. Then people picked it back up. And people and some of the people that weren't afraid of you never stopped talking about you. Official King Payne, Miss Furlow Speaks, and other people. They, oh, you just brushed them off. They ain't, they ain't got no following. They ain't got no following. But people start watching them and people start talking about it themselves. Then Sean David Way, who got 300 plus thousand people, he started talking about you. <laughs> then Tasha K interviewed Lester and Levantre. Then that story went. Again, then Daryl Moore's name popped out. Well, Daryl Moore's the one that originally did it. And oh boy, you couldn't you couldn't do nothing about it this time because I wasn't the one talking. Everybody else was. But then just when you thought you had weathered the storm, Vincent Hill started working on healing himself. And part of his healing through his therapist was admitting his wrongdoing, the things he had done wrong. And he did that abuse series. And I started watching. I said, this man sound like he's about to confess something. And I, 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 I was scared. I said, I don't want to scare him away. So I reached out to him. I said, I like what you're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm watching, blah, 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 blah. He thanked me. I, I, didn't go, I didn't push on it. I didn't bother him. I just kind of watched because me and Levantre had talked. He said, Daryl, he said, just watch. He said, I don't know where he's going with this. He said, but just watch. 
He said, because in one of the videos, he apologized to me without saying my name, and he apologized to Lisa without saying her name. Then when I watched the episode, I said, mm, he said, you will know who he's talking about because you're involved. And so thank you for those who send me cash apps. I really appreciate it. I really, really do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, next thing I did, I kept watching the series. And then that next, that last one, the big one, I went to sleep. I didn't see it live. Somebody, then my phone started ringing. They said, Dare, wake up. Get up now. Get up. Make a cut. Download that video before Larry, the legal team, put a pressure on him to take it down and, and it goes away forever. Because this is the evidence you need. Because everything he said in that video, you have been saying for the last four plus years and blah, 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 blah. blah. He confirmed everything you said about him. And I got up. I didn't even watch it. I downloaded it first. And then I watched it. And then I woke up everybody over here. And they tip. I woke him up early in the morning. I said, get up. He didn't come. This man and conf confirmed everything I said about Larry. Everything I've ever said. And I started typing the, my legal documents and submit to the court. I said, if Larry tried to drag me back in the court, I'm going to request this mediation be just done away with, and I'm just going line by line because everything that you accuse me of in the mediation, saying that I falsely accuse you of accepting PPP loan money, the audio was out there of you saying that you falsified the PPP loan application. First, you said you never got a PPP loan. Then you finally admitted it. Then when you got it, then you said you falsified the information on it. I already knew that because I had what bank the money went in, when it was transferred out of that bank to another bank, had all that information. Um, you admitted that. Got it. This man was in a relationship with you for 13 years. He came out and admitted that y'all were living out high off the hog off the, the donations of the in, to the NBN network. And we already know, according to a court deposition, what you said the NBN network was set up for, and it wasn't set up for that purpose because it's a nonprofit. The nonprofit money had funds are earmarked funds. You have to use it for specified things, not to travel and, and pay your lover's rents and buy clothes and all that kind of stuff. Dr. Dingleberry Lamisha is the nickname we have over here for Larry Reed because he said he was licking. Well, you know, I can't because YouTube won't mess my monetization up. But somebody in the chat explained what, what Dingleberries are. And uh so hold on i'm almost there y'all bear with me well, it's so important to me Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Lordy, 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 Lordy. Oh, all you people that uh <clears throat> said the mean things about me, I ain't forgot you. Called me stupid and stuff. I'm just, I'm going to deal with you, Jabby, turkey legs. I'm going to deal with you. Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's it right there, Joby. That's it. That's it right there. That is it right there. That's it right there. Uh, here you go. My daughter, my daughter, my daughter's sitting right here. You need to hear this because 
out of their, out of their yeah. hands the dingo berry. People don't want you to wear a mask every time they meet you. Oh, believe I'm don't a child. We don't need you to be so, there now. Listen, look. I said, I'm a child. You know, and then they and they made her do that. Eat. They was like, eat, eat my egg. Eat my egg. You know, lick it. No, let say lick it. And so that that became, which actually became, made me develop a desire to, to eat, to toss salad with the guy that I was with that was older than my cousin, Lena, that became a thing we did. That's how I first penetrated into the post. It became a, a world. It became a theme. That's where it came from. That's him talking, not me. That's him, not me. That's him, not me. Hold on here. I got one thing I want to say. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, 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 yes. Ladies and gentlemen, I ain't got no reason to lie. So I'm going to share this with you. It's for your edification. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to sit here. I'm just going to look. And this is in his own words now. Here we go. Uh, Y'all ready? Here we go. I'm going through some things right now after this COVID stuff too. That's why I end up lying on that PP loan saying that y'all work for me and then they only work for me because I need some money to pay these bills. So, yeah. All right. If you laugh, that means you should give a donation. Eight dollars, eight eight cents, twelve eight eight cents, or whatever you want to do. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and I love it. I'm going through some things right now after this COVID stuff too. That's why I end up lying on that PP loan, saying that y'all work for me, and then they only work for me because I need some money to pay these bills. So, yeah. All yeah. right. If you laugh. That means you should give a donation. Eight dollars, eight eight cents, twelve eight eight cents, or whatever you want to do. All right. Thank you so much for watching, and I love it. That ain't me. That's him. That's him. That's him. Admitting that he stole the money. Fraud. That ain't me talking. That's him. <clears throat> so, anywho, I, I ain't lied on nobody. I ain't told no lie on nobody. And thank you for those cash apps. I really appreciate it. God bless you. God bless you one and all. Because I really appreciate it. Yes, he do. God does have the last say. God has the last say. God has the last say. God has the last say. Yes, he does. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. My, 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 
Mm-mm-mm-mm. Let me find this. I got something for you. Now, all these people out here claiming they got the new new stuff. I would appreciate if you you cite your sources like they tell you doing a school in a school news uh, book report. You know where you got your stuff from. Don't be out here like you, you came up with an original thought. All your stuff came from right over here. But we were talking about it first. I mean. Oh, my goodness. If I could just find that little clip. Well, maybe it ain't meant for me to find it tonight. But when I do, I'm going to put it everywhere. Everywhere I go. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. Hold on. If I find it, I know where I got it. Hold on. Ah, la, 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 la. Ah, Ruba Dookie. I found you, you little devil, you. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Ruba Dookie. Uh, Ruba Dookie. Uh, Ruba Dookie. Uh, uh, uh. I'm going to get you straight. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, here we go. I found it. Okay. Uh, this is a content creator that put this out uh, by the name of The Smart Show. So I'm going to share this, and then I'm going to let y'all go on about your business. Yeah, you know... Uh, people people say that uh, Jake's paid people off. That's the convenient way out. Uh, well, anyway, let's let deal with this so we can laugh real quick. You ready? Here we go. I'm going to play it three times. I think that's when I told you that me and Vincent have had sexual dealing. I think that's when I told you that me and Vincent have had sexual dealing. I think that's when I told you that me and Vincent have had sexual dealing. I think that's when I told you that me and Vincent have had sexual dealing. Hmm. Well, well, well. Well, 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 well. It is well, 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 my, 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 my. And it's time for me to say good night. Uh, I'm going to try, depending on how I'm feeling tomorrow, because um, I'm going to have a full day tomorrow. But if I feel up to it, I will create a thumbnail and I'll do something tomorrow night. But definitely between now and now and Wednesday, because I want Uncle Fred. Uh, he's gonna give us some words of wisdom, and because uh, I need to get back to doing something like that on a positive note, we need to in this day and age get wisdom from our elders, and uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be a nice move to talk about. Let's say so.
you know, Patreon is where you go to lie to your, your fan base. You were accused out here in the public. Why can't you defend yourself out here in the public? That's my that's my question. You were accused by the brethren out here, not not behind that wall of Jericho. Come out, come out amongst the peoples out here. You was accused out here, not back over here. You was accused out here. Why you got to go over there to talk to your fan base? They believe whatever you tell them anyway. And they're going to give you 888s. But what's happening is a lot of them people that's over there are starting to question you. And you get mad and you tell them, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. You're a traitor. You're going to hell. Da, 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 da. And that's, that's how you try to manipulate them. You tell them they don't have a right to question you because you're the apostle or prophet and whatever. No. You're a con man that's been exposed. And your time is up. And your time got up because in 2019, a man by the name of Daryl Moore went to you privately and asked you a question about the E. Dewey Smith legal case and said, hey, is it true that this document that I have where it shows that you were paid $10,000 basically to be quiet and to go away, that you reneged on that agreement. Now you owe him 260000 Is it true that you took a payoff, that you took a bribe? Who are you to ask me that? And I said, you're right. You don't owe me an explanation because you don't know me. Uh, you don't have to explain that. I said, I was just coming to you in private because I didn't want to ask you on your show this question. And I thought that was the end of it. So the next day, you pull up all my information and you try to drag me. Oh, who is he to ask me this? He don't even have a a 500 subscribers. He's not even monetized, blah, 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 blah. But the way God would have it. I said, okay, playboy, this is what you want to get down with. I ain't one of them church cats. I'm not going to tuck my tail and run away. I said, you want this smoke? You got it. And I start, I got on that thing. I said, oh, he's from North Carolina like me. Oh, oh, oh. oh wait a minute. He used to pass that church in Fairville. Fairville is my hometown. That's where I was born. Do, 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 do. I started looking up your background. Then people started, t started talking who don't like you. They said, you need to talk to this person. You need to talk to this person. If you get this person to talk, he'll tell you everything you need to know. You need to find this ex-church member. Da, 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 da. That's, how I, that's how I found out what I found out. And as fate would have it, that was September. By December, I was monetized. By that summer, I had monetized a second channel. All you had to do was not try to get fly at the mouth with me. I said, you know, when you said, who am I? And I, said, I said, you're right. You don't owe me an explanation. I was gone. I was going to left it. had left it alone. I was like, you know, he didn't want to talk about it. Okay. Who cares? But when you tried to disrespect me because you thought you was a big, bad bully, and I hate bullies. Everybody knows that. I hate bullies. Everybody knows me. I hate bullies. And you are a bully. You think because you got a few dollars to rub together that you can bully people. And I'll fight you to the death before I let you punk me. That's just how I'm, I'm not cut like that. I'm going to get all my licks back. Yes, I've heard of Whiteville. Been all through Goldsboro. That's where Frank Lucas is from. Goldsboro. American gangster. So, when you did that to me, it wasn't an ego thing, it wasn't a pride thing. It was a disrespect thing. It was a, it was a man to man thing. I said, I'm going to deal with this fool. It was never my intention to try to tear your empire down. I was like, oh, it was just to prove a point to you. You don't play with people like that because you don't know who you're messing with. And then I started, the more I started looking, I'm like, man, this dude's a crook. 
I didn't even know about the sexual uh, assault allegations. I didn't know about the, I was, Pikachu was gay. I think because my person, my friend that introduced me to watching your channel in the beginning, they are here, Messy Queen, but he's funny. And, and truth be told, when I first started watching, you was funny. You were funny. You were funny gay dude. You were funny. Uh, I mean, funny haha, -ha, not like funny, but funny haha. -ha. Um, so, uh, yeah, he's a messy little queen, but he's funny. He got a good sense of humor. And that's how you draw people, because you, you got a good com comedic timing. And I did stand-up comedy, so I recognized that. And, uh, but I, I saw through the bullshit, and he was conning people. And then when I saw who you was attached to, even Art Jordan and that late night BET con man, I said, oh, I, I said they got a racket going. Then I start pulling up your uh, your nonprofit records and the fact that you hadn't submitted your form 990s and you hadn't filled out your annual reports and you hadn't been paying taxes. And then when I started doing that, that's when you get that's when you start paying attention to me. That's when you start putting CTV out there to harass them and do your dirty work. Around that time, I interviewed Jimmy Battles. Then I interviewed, after I interviewed Jimmy, Jimmy Battles, the three uh, people that accused you came forward. The three people that survived what they say you did to them. They came forward. Then you knew. Then that's when you decided to sue me because you had to. But, but you lied to Tasha K and said I was out here spreading lies about you. And she said, well, go on and sue him. And see, she didn't know the backstory at that time so she say she said she didn't know so she was just pacing her uh, suggestion to you off of the lie that you told so then you went out and you sued me you never but then she turned around and interviewed the same person that i interviewed and you didn't sue her because she knew stuff that you didn't want out and she had money to fight you all the way and then that video of you high on weed gummies and slurring and talking about if I ever suck a dick I hell and all that came out and then when I played that for the judge and I said this is your, your reverend that he's this gospel artist and actor and writer and mentor and counselor but he how on, on on cannabis gummies talking about has he ever sucked a dick I hell and that was you but you said that I falsely accused you of being gay and you was on tape talking about, ah, hell. And that was you. That was you. And when he saw that, and his staff at that court, I saw that, he was like, oh, because see, we never got to go to court because you heard of and put that mediation because I, I was requesting a copy of the medical records from Raleigh, North Carolina. So he never got to see all that stuff until I did that open letter to the judge. He never got to see any of that. So, so he was just basing his stuff off of the lies of you and the, the lies you were telling your attorney at the time. That's what he was basing his, his, his stuff off of. But when he saw that, he was like, oh. And that's when you... Um, you and Puss in Boots, Conscious TV. Oh, we won the case. He said, if I didn't take a video down, I'd be fined seven hundred and seventy something dollars. I appealed that, which you didn't tell the peoples. And then when they actually looked at your videos, and the fact that I had to file a restraining order against Conscious TV, and you had said Conscious TV didn't work for you. And I produced evidence to show that he did. Then he enjoined CTV into the uh, mediation agreement. And CTV continued to make videos about me, which also have violated the restraint order that I have against him. Technically, I ain't going to go there. But him and the other boy got shot in the ass down in Texas. They can't mention my, you know, they can't bother me. And they can't employ anybody else to bother me. And since they're both affiliated with you, it is your duty to make sure that they don't bother me. But you fail to do that, which makes you liable.
because but the level of harassment that they were doing towards me, I felt for my safety. I felt my physical safety was at harm. I had to go buy extra firearms to put arm myself in case one of them fools came up to my house or one of the people that were underneath them or people that were affiliated with you were coming to my house. I had to buy a thousand rounds of ammunition and be prepared just in case. And I put all that in the court document. I said, I fear for my life and my safety. These people are mentally unstable. And I showed the videos of that boy sitting there with that red flashlight rocking back and forth, three hours and 38 minutes. And I showed that boy down in Texas going to people's jobs and doing for videos out in front of people's jobs. Crazy. I said, these people are mentally unstable. I said, I might have to put two in their chest if they come, in my, come around me within so many feet of me. People have already in Chicago talking about F my kids. I might have to do something to them. People flashing guns and saying they're going to do something to me down in South Carolina. I, I showed the video of that. And the police report. I had to do all of that. These were your people. But I say all that to say this, sir. You can't not, you cannot lie your way out of this. One. Larry Reed lies into my bullshit now on network. Your empire has come and is crumbling. People are putting their money back in their pocket. People are walking away from you. CTV can't put no spin doctor moves on this. He can't tell no lies for you. You done. You said you wasn't gay. We know you. It's been confirmed. Two levels, not one, two levels. Your health situation, you better, you better, you better pray nobody dies behind that you dealt with and they connect it back to you. Uh, arranged marriage definitely gonna get you locked up because somebody gonna call and report you to ICE because there's a marriage license. True enough, your name's not on it, but we got audio where you say you arranged it, you arranged it, Shamako officiated it. His ex-wife was the bride. Your lover was the groom. Your current cocky, one of your many concubines, Chamaco officiated. He officiated with. So it all ties back to you because what do they all have in common? You. All three of them got you in common. And got your big mouth. Uh, Jimmy Bow said that your tongue was going to be the rope that hung you one day. And you out here you just played where you admitted the um, conscious TV was a person you were talking to that you admitted to sleeping with Vincent. You're trying to minimize it, oh, like it was a one time thing. No, you had a 13 year relationship with him. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that you only had relations with him four times a year. 13 times four, what's that? Top of my head, that's 52, 52 times. If you had sex around four times a year, that's 52 times over 32 or 13 years. We know that's a lie. Because he even said out his own mouth, you had it at least once a week for 13 years. That was why you was married and making babies with your wife. Slowly but surely, the fabric is unraveling. You're behind a torn veil, like in the Bible. That veil going to tear from top to bottom. That people are jumping ship. Your money is running out, so your bought friendships are about to dry up. Do I rejoice in your downfall? Nope. Do I feel vindicated? People ask me that. Nope. I've been telling the truth. That's the only thing that's uh, only thing I'm saying. I said it then. I'm saying it now. The lady told me, said, "Young man, as long as you tell the truth, the truth will be your shield." I told the truth on you. While you are here, you and your friends and your associates were out here lying on me. I was telling the truth on all of you. 
That's why none of the stuff you said about me ever stuck to me. I have never been accused of molesting any children. I have never been accused of having HIV or having it and spreading it to anybody. I've never been accused of embezzling any funds. I've never been attached to any kind of scandal. I've never arranged any marriages. That's you. That's all you. Those are all the allegations against you. I've never been arrested for prostitution in a parking lot. That's conscious TV. I've never had anybody say that I was on crack cocaine or, or doing drugs. That's conscious TV. I've never had anybody put a video up of me high on gummies. That's you, Larry. Reed. Nobody's ever produced a video where I, I admitted to buying my kids uh sex toys and, and and drugs that was you larry nobody's ever attached those things to me uh i have never testified against my mother and had her sent to prison for 20 24 years that's jive that's your boy yeah and jazz was the is the god brother of, of one of the uh, people that accuse you of sexual assault in them? That's your boy. I've never been accused of that. He has. He's the one that's been arrested for fraud. His sister, she the one that got. Uh, I had a T-shirt used to hang up over behind me, and I'm gonna start putting it back up there because she said F there last week. She's the one that got arrested for val on Valentine's Day, 2018, for stalking. She's the one that went to prison, not me. Andrea Garrison. <laughs> what do I what do I start and stop with Andrea Garrison? That's a that's a whole nine, ten part series. These are all your people's. All that stuff applies to y'all. None of it applies to me. None of it. Because I ain't did nothing like that. That's why people go, oh, what is it? What have you gained from it? What's the end, end game? The end game is I told the truth and the truth came out. That's the end game. And I'm just sitting back like this, smoking my cigar, looking at all the people making content, using my videos, using my screenshots, using my stuff. Well, some of them are nice enough to say, well, I got this from Daryl Moore. Shout out Daryl Moore, cigar blogger, blah, 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 blah. And I ain't had to say a mumbling word. And they chopping your tail to pieces. And I'm here for it because I'm with the shits. And you getting everything because you thought you could put money and make all your stuff go away. And see, you never counted on a person like me, a little old David, that wasn't even monetized. The insignificant vlogger taking five smooth stones out of a satchel and, going, uh, uh, and slaying that giant that's known as Larry Reed. You never counted, you underestimated me. And that's been my secret weapon for my entire life. People have always underestimated me, and that's my secret weapon. I don't want you to expect nothing from me. So when I roll up on you, creep up on you, I got you. While you were out here laughing and giggling, ah, ha, 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 I was just staying the course, staying the course. And people kept coming to me, Daryl, look at this. Daryl, look at that. No, you're in the wrong place. Go over here. Go talk to this person. And then while I was looking, God was touching people's hearts and minds to help me. And then what do you know? I was talking to a King Payne. King Payne out here exposing you. And then God put King Payne in contact with Lester. I didn't interview Lester. King Payne interviewed Lester. And then King Payne can say, I ain't sharing nothing with Daryl. King Payne 
told me about Lester. I still have not and will not interview Lester. There is nothing that I could ask Lester that King Payne didn't ask him originally and Tasha K didn't follow up. Yeah, there's nothing else to ask Lester. King Payne brought the world Lester Pelty. Tasha K picked it up and, and put it to 1.5 million people. You ain't sued her, and you darn sure ain't sued uh, King Payne. Vincent Hill came out himself and uh, apologized to your ex-wife for what he had done all them years behind her back and told everything. Told everything. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. 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 Greenleaf ain't got nothing on this. Greenleaf ain't got nothing on this. Hmm. 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 You, you was out here making fun of Donald McClurkin when he fainting at the wheel, talking about doing the Dante. Like, you're going to be fainting soon because you're thin as a pencil. We're going to be doing the Larry. And right, Amy, get, get him, baby. Come here, baby. Get him, baby. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Get him. Say Larry come. Get it. Get it. Yeah, he had the woman. Get him in. Get him. Get it. There you go. Go get it. Go get it. Go get him, baby. Go get it. There you go. There you go. Go get it. Get it. Good girl. Oh, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm sorry. Come in. Come in. There you go. Yeah, you go that little thing. Oh, you don't want to sit in them? Okay. I just said the wrong name. I said Larry. Larry. Uh. <laughs> Larry. 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 Yeah, you my girl. You my little sweetie. We're gonna go in the kitchen and eat some some Chinese food in a little bit. Yeah. But I'm about to get out of here. But yeah. Y'all can't cover this one up. You ain't got no closet door, so you can't come out the closet. You can't come out the dark. You ain't even got a you ain't even got a glass sliding door, place of glass, nothing else. Rose colored glasses, nothing. You just got a walk in closet. Cause your secret ain't a secret no more. And your boy that you ashamed to be seen with publicly he can't put a spin on this he can't make no lies and tell no lies and the other day he tried to cut up an audio that the official king painted released and he tried to cut it up in such a way to make you look good and the only thing king Payne did was come back and play play the original uncut audio it's up man just 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 admit it's up. We got you on tape admitting that you arranged a marriage. Uh, we got you on tape with PPP loan. We got you on tape admitting you slept with Vincent. We got you, man. You just got. You just got. You got. You just. You just. The gig is up. I mean, it's, it's up, bro. It's up. Your scam and your scheme and your line have all caught up with you. Now, some people are going to still rock with you, and that's their business. But life as you know it is over. And now you got the you got the federal government to worry about. 
because you committed a crime. And guess what? When they pick Latrice up, Latrice is not going to go to prison for you. Latrice got a child to raise. She's not going to go to prison for you. Lester don't want to be in the United States no way. So deporting Lester ain't in, in a whoop to whoop to do whoop to do. He don't care. He don't care no way. He don't care. You do. You got nowhere to go. Five years in prison. That's 60 months for the people in the back with the seventh grade education that follow you. That's 60 months. Five years is 60 months. In the feds, you don't get no early release. You got to do your full prison time. You get five years, you're going to do five years. Ain't no parole. You get whatever you get, that's what you serve. Five years. And when you come out, you will be the elderly, as you like to call folks. You will be the elderly. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Arranging a marriage is a felony. You have a convicted, you'll be a convicted felon. You won't be able to run a church then. You'll be able to run a prison ministry, but you can't have a regular church. What a nonprofit. Mm-hmm. That's one side. Now, all the people that's out here that have had men's this, you know who you are. You slept with Larry Reed. You, I suggest you go to a doctor and get tested. And if you pop up positive, you need to contact Larry Reed and be like, hey, uh, we got to talk, playboy. Da, 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 da. And because that means he knew he had it and he didn't tell you and y'all had unprotected sex because I know somebody that said he refuses to wear a condom and yeah so govern yourself accordingly I'm out it's uh Oh, I stay long. I was supposed to. But anyway, good night. I love you with the love of the Lord and uh, get tested. Don't do no arranged marriage. Don't, Larry, don't do no press conference. Don't do no, no video. We don't want to hear it. We really don't. Unless you're going to talk about the three people that survived, what they say you did to them, the embezzlement, misappropriation of funds, and the PPP loan scam, uh, your health status, and that arranged marriage, well, you, you know, you can talk to us about. I mean, anything else is just a total waste of our time and yours. But we already know you get it. We don't need that. We don't need that one. You know, people in the cemetery can see you gay. So that's not a shock. That's not a story. That's just you finally. What that is, is just you finally admitting to yourself what we already knew. Mm -hmm. That was before Lester and before Vincent said what they said. We already knew. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But this, yeah, if you haven't done so already, please click like. And if I would appreciate you share this video and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. Um, and thank you for those who have uh, sent me cash out, you know, because down here, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. And the super chat, I appreciate it all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, be looking out. I'll be posting something, um, some new content going to be coming out. And yeah, I'll be seeing you soon. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night.
Good night. One more time for the people in the back. This is just so funny to me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is funny. Glory to God. Some of your faces are going to be in the newspaper. Huh? Some of your faces are going to be on TV. Huh? Showing the before and the after picture. Huh? Glory to God. Because God. Good night.